today I will be stand, uh, I'll be talking about standing. So taking a stand, standing against, standing your ground, standing firm. So as I read this passage, that's Ephesians 6, verse 10 to 20, um, look at the word standing. Uh, think about it when it comes up. Listen, listen for it. Okay, verse 10. <coughs> Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armour of God, that you might be able to <coughs> that you might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armour of God, that you that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. And for me, that utterance may be given to me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an, for which I am an ambassador in chains, that I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Okay, first of all, I want to, I want to start with the, the nature of standing. Um, if we look at verse 12, a few words in, it says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. So this quite clearly is not physical. And the end of verse 12 says, uh, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. So it's quite clearly a spiritual battle, not a physical battle. So it's important to remember when we're taking this stand, it's a spiritual standing as well. Who are we standing against? It's very hard to fight an opponent if you don't know who you're fighting, if you don't know their strengths and their weaknesses. So I think it's important we start by looking at the enemy. Um, verse 11 of Ephesians 6. Um, Put on the whole armour of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. So quite clearly you see here, it's the devil and his, it's his wiles that we're fighting. I looked up the definition of wiles. Uh, wiles means devious or cunning stratagems or schemes employed in manipulating or persuading someone to do what one wants. So here we see the devil and he's got his plans, these schemes to make you turn away from God. Um, let's go to verse 12. Uh, I'm going to sort of dissect this a little. Um, uh, some of this material is from Near the Truth, from this bit that I'm looking at. So if we go down, uh, principalities in verse 12, this refers to their rule in the world. Uh, powers, uh, I saw someone describe this as usurped authority. Um, I didn't know what that meant, so I looked it up. It's U-S-U-R-P-E-D, spell. Um, taking a position of power or importance illegally or by force. So Satan has taken something that's not his, but God's let him do this, but he's provided us a way for standing against it. Um, later, going further down, against powers or world rulers, it says in some versions, so this is their extent. The fight, the spiritual fight is here on earth. Their extent only exists here. Spiritual hosts of wickedness, well, they're wicked, that's their nature. Both they're, they're wicked by nature. Um, verse 12 also begins with um, wrestle, the word wrestle. Um, and this implies a close combat if you've seen wrestling. It's hand to hand, head to head, heart to heart. It's very sweaty and, and personal. And this image makes us think that it's the mind and the heart that can be affected um, in this fight, in this stand. So we've looked at what, that, what we're standing against. And now I want to think just quickly about. Uh, what we're standing for. Um, if we look at Ephesians <coughs> verse 10, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. The Lord is the one that we're standing for. Um, verse 11, uh, put on the whole armour of God. It's God's uniform, it's God's armour that we're wearing, it's God that we're standing for, very clearly. Okay, so 
We're standing against the devil and his wiles, and we're standing for God. Um, how can we stand? That's the important thing. People want to know how can we stand? How can we stand our ground? How can we stand firm? And another word I, I think we can use here is steadfast as well. How can we remain steadfast? Um, so standing firm implies we are on a firm foundation. So I want to turn to 1 Corinthians 3, verse 11. For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is our firm, our firm foundation. Nothing is firm. So we're standing on Christ. He's our foundation. And I would take that further and I would say Jesus is the armor. I think we can go that far. If we look at Galatians 3 and 27. Yeah, yeah. Galatians 3 and 27. Just a quick verse. Uh, for as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. And I'm quickly going to turn to another one, Romans 13, verse 14. Uh, Romans 13, verse 14. Uh, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust. So put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, if we flip back to Ephesians 6 again. I want to link this in. Um, if we look at verse 11 and 13 of Ephesians 6, uh, it says, um, put on the whole armour of God um, and uh, take up the whole armour of God in 13 also has. Um, there's a, a couple of points to be raised here. Um, first of all, it's the whole armour. It's not one bit or the other bit. Um, so I know the other brethren have gone through this week different bits of the armor, but I, I can't cover standing without having gone through all of them. So I'm going to quickly recap them now for you. Um, verse 14, um, the belt of truth. Christ is truth. Um, if we're thinking about putting Christ on. Um, the breastplate of righteousness. Protecting our hearts, providing courage. Christ is our breastplate. Um, verse 15, uh, peace is the main word here. Christ is peace. Verse 16, the shield of faith uh, with which we're so vulnerable without. Christ provides our faith. In, in Christ we can have faith. Verse 17, how much salvation? <laughs> Christ is our salvation. It's very clear. Protecting our minds. Um, the sword of the Spirit. Um, this is my favorite, the Word of God. Uh, it's so essential, it needs to be used daily. Um, and Christ is the answer to it. Christ is, is the point of it. That's what it's telling us about. Uh, and finally, which Victor will come later, prayer. Without communication with God, it's so easy to fall. It's, uh, without that communication, you'll, you won't be able to stand. Um, interestingly, in verses 11 and 13, um, it says, put on the armor of God the whole armour of God, and take up the whole armour of God. Um, you have to take responsibility to put that armour on. No one will put it on for you. You can ask Christ to help you put it on, but it's your responsibility. I can't do it for you. Um, just to give you an analogy, so you can forget that using the whole armour is important. Um, I, I go scuba diving, and it's lots of different bit of kit, just like the armour. And I was speaking with Steve Seddon last week, and we were talking about diving, and he said, so what kit do you have? And I kind of said, oh, I've got all of it except except the tank and the weights. And he, he sort of talked for a moment, and then he said, aren't they essential? <laughs> <laughs> I said, yeah, they are. I have to them. So you can't go diving without a tank and without weights. This is essential. Um, obviously, you know other bits of kit too, but we see that you need the whole armour. Low visibility is another problem while diving. Often, uh, when the last week I've been diving, and if Isaac and I were underwater, I wouldn't be able to see him in some of the places where I was. Um, you know, it would have to be where this white boy is to me. So, if you if the communication breaks down and 
here I'm referring to prayer, then you can lose each other underwater. So I think in order to stand, in order to be with Christ, your buddy, um, you need to keep up the communication. Um, I want to look at Christ um, as an example of standing firm. Let's turn to Luke 14. Sorry, sorry, Luke 4. Luke 4, verse 1 to 15. I'm not going to read it all because we don't have a lot of time, but I encourage you to read this section. This is about Christ, and he goes into the wilderness, and here Satan uh, tries to tempt him. And we see here three times quite clearly, Christ uses the sword, he uses the word, he stands, and he tells the devil to depart, using the word. And we see here the strength of this armor, we see here the strength of the sword, because in verse 13, you know, when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. This is powerful armor, this is a powerful weapon, and the devil was sent away for a time until there was another opportune moment. I think it's important to remember how powerful this, this armor is, this weapon is. Um, and then, during this time, Christ goes to the synagogue to teach, and he's glorified. And I think it's important when you're wearing the armor, and if you're in the strength of that, and you're standing, it's a good time to teach. Um, a question I was given in the, sort of, to cover during this, um, it is to what extent should Christians stand against active resistance against something? For example, if there is a law passed that we believe is unbiblical, what should our stance be? So I'm going to start in Romans 13, verse 1. Let every soul be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and the authorities that exist are appointed by God. So, those people who govern us today, God has allowed them or put them where they are, but I don't think you can take it just on that base value. I think you also have to consider um, Acts 5, uh, verse 12. Acts 5, verse 12 to 32. And here, uh, again, I'm going to summarize, um, but I encourage you to go and read it. Um, here we see Peter and the apostles and their teaching in Jerusalem. And the high priests and Sadducees um, put them in prison for doing this. And an angel lets them out. And in verse 20, the angel says, Go stand in a temple and speak to the people for the words of this life. And the high priests and the Sadducees obviously aren't aware of this escape, and so they send off to the, the prison for for, Paul, uh, sorry, for Peter and the other apostles, and um, they're not there. And um, a report comes in verse 25, and, it's, uh, and this person says to them, Look, the men whom you put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Um, and so they're brought before the council in verse 27 in verse 28 they're told off they said did we not strictly command you not to teach in his name and look you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood on us and then very importantly in verse 29 they reply um, but Peter and the apostles answered and said we ought to obey God rather than man so I think when we're standing it's important to remember if it's in terms of a law or something that someone's asking you to do, a governing authority or somebody else, it's better to obey God rather than man. We ought to obey God rather than man. I think we should take what they said there. Um, I want to close with a few verses. Uh, let's go to 1 Peter 5, verse 8 and 9. Chapter 5. First Peter chapter five verse eight and nine. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him, 
steadfast or I think stand firm in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. When we look back at Ephesians um, 6, verse uh, 18 and 19, we see that Paul asks for those he's just told about the armor to pray for uh, not only themselves but for him, that he might go out boldly. And I think it's important to remember um, in terms of standing that we're not on our own. Each of us is to stand for God and we can encourage each other and pray for each other in terms of one another standing. Um, and Paul's intention was that while standing, while wearing the armour, he wanted to go out boldly, telling people about Christ. And I think that's what needs to be our focus um, as we stand. Um, I also want to look at 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 57 and 8. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labour is not in vain. A steadfast, I think, is also stand firm. I think they're very similar. And so... Uh, stand firm or steadfast, immovable, knowing that your work in the Lord is not in vain. Um, and the very last thing I will end with, uh, let's go back to Ephesians just to finish off. Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6. And verse 13. Therefore, take up the whole armour of God that you may be able to withstand the evil day and having done all to stand. I think it's good to end here. Um, having done all to stand, at the very end, will you be standing? Have you asked Christ, have you asked God to armour you up? Are you, are you using the armour? Are you practising with the sword? Are you ready to stand? And are you ready to, to spread his word? Thank you for listening.